I want to no. bring up this issue because I think as long as we're talking about health care, this is the ultimate health care issue, the environment. And here's the weekly standard, which is the Bible of conservatism. I and mean, there's Al Gore, you see, exposed. <laughs> gotcha. See, it snowed this year, so Al Gore is a douchebag. <laughs> Case closed on climate science. And I, I, this is my question for conservatives. Don't you want to live, too? <laughs> I, I, I do not understand. I just don't get it. The people who, who write this magazine, they're not intellectually deficient. They must know that every serious climate scientist in the world says things are bad and getting worse. Our scientific I mean, illiteracy makes us vulnerable to junk science, and there is plenty of junk around. Which brings us to the global warming debate. Lots of junk there. Still, many good scientists are genuinely worried that greenhouse gases may cause disruptive warning. So how worried should we be? What are the facts? Well, let's Boy, Spencer joins us now. He's a climate scientist at the University of Alabama at Huntsville. So, Roy, the, the trend is up. A lot of people are scared. Well, the trend has been up. People ask me, is it warming now? And there's no way to tell because you'd have to see it in the rearview mirror. In other words, it could be that from now on we're going to have cooling for the next 30 years. We really don't know. Because climate changes. It's climate changes. Gone climate up. changes. It, it's true that we are warm now. We may not be as warm as we were a thousand years ago. We really don't know. But we are pretty warm now. But as we'll talk about later, if we have time, I, I think it's mostly a natural warming that we've seen. But you must be a minority in saying natural. The impression I get is all the climatologists say man's doing this. Well, what's interesting about that is it's sort of a herd mentality. All of the scientists just figure that some other scientist knows what the heck they're talking about. Even though we spend billions of dollars on climate research, virtually none of that money goes into investigating the possibility that most climate change might be natural. Virtually none. All the money goes into the assumption that it's man-made and trying to build evidence that it's man-made. And if you pay scientists enough money, uh, they'll find what you want them to find. All right, well, answers like that are very unsatisfying to the people who are very alarmed and concerned that all this industrial activity, which improves people's lives, is poisoning the planet. So they want to cap it. They want carbon taxes, cap and trade. But every and serious climate scientist in the world says things are bad and getting worse. I mean, if you read the newspaper, I know, an old-fashioned tactic. <laughs> but every week there's something that's more frightening than the last. But Bill, uh, these blizzards that we had in Washington, D.C., RFK Jr., he said, and you know he supports this global warming theory, he said that he would never see snowfalls like he did in his childhood because of global warming. And what did we get? We got three blizzards in a row this last Christmas. So I don't, but, I don't but think Amy, that weather patterns tell us whether or not global warming is happening. But people who advocated for global warming, they told us weather patterns can tell you if it's happening. Are you skeptical? And we have, and we have these. Are blizzards. you a global warming? I'm a skeptic. skeptic. And you let's, are. I am a skeptic. And how Phil could that Jones, be? How could that be? How could that be? Because this, I don't think I the science is settled, and the scientists who were involved in it themselves, hmm. Phil Jones, who is the head oh, of, of research in You know that's a red England. herring. You know that you Phil know Jones also said. Hold on. You're he so, also said you're so that the Middle smart. Ages yes. may you don't have smoke been hotter the pot. than it is now. <laughs> you haven't blown well, your you mind out that. in a car because you didn't notice that the light had changed like I have. How can I see this and you don't? That's, that's what I can't wrap my head One around. One of the top climate researchers, he admitted now that the Middle Ages may have been hotter than it is now before there were cars or CO2 emitting factories. I'll be factories. lucky to get out of my we have, Middle Ages. We know, <laughs> we know that sunspots, for example, uh, changes in the, the currents, all of these this things This is not anything, weather. any, before, for people who are watching and don't read all the minute time, this is nothing any serious climate scientist signs on to. The debate's over. The science is agreed upon. The debate is over. And the science is in. It's absurd for people to say that sort of thing. It's, it's really wrong. These scientists are among those who say the debate is by no means over. Right there. John Christie and Roy Spencer won NASA's Medal for Exceptional Achievement for figuring out how to get temperature data from satellites. They agree that the Earth is warmed. We all agree that it's warmed, I think. The big question is, and the thing that we dispute is, is it because of mankind? Climate changes, they point out. It always has, with or without man. 
early last century, even without today's big output of carbon dioxide, the Arctic went through a warm period. The media fretted about that then, too. And Greenland's temperatures rose 50% faster in the 1920s than they're rising now. Some scientists say the warming may be caused by changes in the sun, or ocean currents, or changes in cloud cover, or other things we don't understand. The debate is not over. And anyway, who's to say that yesterday's temperature was the perfect one? If temperatures keep rising now, these now scientists say, we don't know that that will be all bad. The fact is, when the climate changes, there are gains and there are losses. But Tim Ball, who studies the history of climate change, points out that all we hear about is the bad news from the IPCC, that massive group of global warming scientists. A thousand scientists. Two thousand scientists. 2,500 scientists say the globe is getting warmer and we are to blame. There is the most unmitigated rubbish uh, talked about. Paul Ryder of the Pasteur Institute and John Christie say they were members of the IPCC. That so-called group of scientists, they say, is not what people think it is. The IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It is governments who uh, nominate people. You'll find in many chapters that there are people who are not scientists at all. Who are they? They were essentially activists. Let's not talk about global warming. Holland Let's say asked. climate change. Is well, that, the climate that is changing? That's now the new term of art because is the climate change? Climate always changes. The question okay. is, is it mad? Is it changing for the for better or for the worse? Wreck our economy over. Actually, the last ten years, the climate has not. We're wrecking, wrecking our, our economy. It would save it, our absolutely. economy. We're talking about. Do you, don't you understand what all the countries in the world are getting in on now? They're getting in on the business. Yes. Of I clean support that, absolutely. If you want to, if you want to drive if, a Prius and your brakes work, uh, then you absolutely should uh, have that option. Amy, we're not talking... Holland has asked the International Climate uh, Committee to please stop advertising that we're 50% underwater. We're not. No, these they're are, only 25% underwater. But these See, are you dumb hippies, we're only going to drown in 50 years, not 30. But Phil, there have been, there have been these scare tactics. You, you uh, charge Republicans with it, these because scare tactics. Because it's scary. Global warming. <laughs> global warming these are I scary. wish there were okay. more scare tactics. Let's, let's get back. More than 250 million people. Her nightmares predict a future with deserts, mega tornadoes, and massive floods. And isn't it true? Won't we face massive floods? Former Vice President Al Gore won a Nobel Prize for his movie that warned us sea levels will rise 20 feet. This is what would happen to the sea level in Florida. This is what would happen to San Francisco Bay. Gore said this is consensus thinking. He sneers at skeptics. The so-called skeptics will sometimes say, oh, this whole thing, this is a cyclical phenomenon. There was a medieval warming period after all. Well, yeah, there, there was. There, there it is right there. There are two others. But compared to what's going on now, there's just no comparison. There's just no comparison, says the former vice president. And you're one of those skeptics that he sneers <laughs> at. Deniers, yeah. And let's, like, let's, let's just accept, um, for argument's sake, I'm going to accept that global warming is occurring and that it's man-caused. Well, now, given that, I think that the effects of global warming are grossly exaggerated, but, and that the money that we're going to spend on this is kind of insane, that, that cap-and-trade is an insane tax applied, and, and, it's, and well, the amount well, of money that well, we're going to worked, be spend on this worked when could President be applied to, to, mal to malaria, uh, to, uh, to malaria. Well, to reducing the incidence of malaria, to, to making clean water, other environmental, other other environmental okay. issues. Well, first of all, that, cap that and would... trade worked when President Bush the first used it on acid rain. That was a Republican administration. And back then, it was not so controversial that they could get it passed. Second of all, this idea that for argument's sake, how about for every scientist says it so, say? You know, this is the, the problem. Is that so when you go to these climatological scientific meetings, do people beat you up? I mean, are, are you a denier, an outlier who's scorned? Now, actually, those terms like denier only get mentioned when you're talking to a reporter. When, when we go to conferences, scientists are usually pretty cordial towards one another. And there are plenty of people who quietly ag agree with you. Yes, there are people out there that are afraid to speak up on this issue because their funding depends on the global warming scare continuing. I hate, I'm sorry to be, sound cynical, but it's the truth.
Thank you, Roy Spencer, for joining us. We did ask Vice President uh, Gore to be here, but he declined. He, he always declines. He won't debate anyone ever. I keep hoping uh, the number we gave him rings this special green phone. <laughs> Mr. Gore, phone is always ready. If you ever want to call, we await your call. But I don't agree that the science is settled, and I do think there is still a raging debate. And when we're talking about the consequence of following this policy being something trillions of dollars, it's, you know as well as I do, China and India it, as it, developing it, nations are not going to sign on to this. Yeah, they did. They are developing they did it green this technologies, week. but they are not going to be... A no, this week they said we're, we're on board with Copenhagen. I, I, yeah, they did. Copenhagen was a failure for this president because everybody's kicking it down the road, but that as argument, you yourself say. That, you know, you need a time machine to make that argument that China is the one dragging their feet. That was a good argument three years ago. It's not true anymore. I don't see it happening. Well, you don't read. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but